India is running out of rare earth metals, and without them, its dreams of becoming the next tech superpower are about as realistic as building a rocket out of cow dung powered by curry fuel. In fact, India's own industry experts are now sounding the alarm. The Federation of Indian Mineral Industries just issued a blunt warning. The country is facing a severe shortage of rare earth elements. These are the critical ingredients that power everything from electric vehicles and wind turbines to smartphones, defense systems, and satellites. Without them, industrial growth just stops. You're basically set back 100 years. And here's the worst part. India barely produces any. Meanwhile, their self-proclaimed rival China controls over 85% of the world's rare earth processing capacity. It dominates the entire supply chain, from mining to refining to turning those raw materials into usable products. And guess what? India is now begging China for scraps. That's not an exaggeration. That's the current state of India's so-called tech ambition. The Parati netizens must truly be deluded if they think that being a superpower means begging their neighbor for scraps. Let's unpack this. India has known about its rare earth problem for years, but instead of fixing it, successive governments sat on their hands pretending that somehow this problem would solve itself. Spoiler alert, it didn't. Today, the global rare earth supply is under tight control, mostly by China with some marginal production coming from countries like Australia and Myanmar. The United States used to produce its own, but that ended in the 1990s when China flooded the market with cheap exports, driving competitors out of business. And now in 2025, that old dependency has come back to haunt everyone, especially India. You see, India does have some rare earth reserves, especially in states like Tamil Nadu and Andhra Pradesh. It's estimated that they have around 8% of the world's current proven reserves. But here's the catch. India doesn't have the refining capacity. Mining is only half the story. The real value is in processing. And guess who holds a chokehold over that part of the supply chain? Yep, China. And China's not just sitting on this advantage, they're using it. During the Trump era trade wars, rare earths became a geopolitical weapon. In 2019, when the US threatened more tariffs, China hinted it might restrict exports of rare earths to American companies. That single warning sent shockwaves through markets. Tech firms panicked. EV manufacturers scrambled. Even the Pentagon was caught off guard. Eventually, Trump backed off. He tweeted tough, but he folded quietly. Similar to how Modi acts, that's how powerful rare earths are. They're the hidden lever behind the entire global tech economy, and more recently, in 2025, Trump just chickened out again. He cut off Chinese trade through heavy tariffs, but that only lasted about a month before he reversed and accepted Chinese rare earth metals again. The reason is simple. The U.S. would have been fucked if they continued without rare earth metals. Now fast forward to India. As Modi's government pushes make in India and dreams of turning the country into the next global manufacturing hub, they've run headfirst into a wall. No rare earths, no progress. In March 2025, India's Ministry of Mines issued a quiet but telling report. It said, The country faces a strategic vulnerability due to its dependence on imports of rare earth elements. That's bureaucratic speak for, We're screwed. And Modi knows it. His government has started negotiations, once again, with China, to import more rare earth metals. Yes, the same government that claims to be decoupling from China, that bans Chinese apps for security reasons, is now begging Beijing for critical resources. You can't make this up. Even worse, the Indian government is now trying to rebrand this disaster as a strategic partnership. But when one side owns the mines, the refineries, and the global supply chain, and the other side just needs help to keep its industries alive, that's not a partnership. That's dependency. Like a drug addict who thinks their dealer is their business partner. Let's zoom out for a second. Rare earths are not rare in the literal sense. They exist in many parts of the world, but extracting them is dirty, expensive, and complicated work. The refining process produces toxic waste, radioactive byproducts, and requires expertise India simply doesn't have. China took the lead decades ago and built an entire ecosystem around it. They subsidized mining, they trained engineers, they built processing plants at massive scale, and most importantly, they didn't hesitate to get their hands dirty. India, on the other hand, endless red tape, environmental clearances that take years, 
lack of skilled labor, and a bureaucratic maze that chokes any industrial project before it even begins. That's why even today India exports its rare earth ores to China for refining. It's like digging your own food, handing it over to someone else, and then begging to buy it back at five times the price. And other countries are moving ahead too. Australia's Linus Corporation has scaled up its rare earth production massively. The U.S. is reopening rare earth mines in California. Even Vietnam is ramping up production with help from Japan and South Korea. And India? Still issuing reports? Still stuck in bureaucratic nightmare and red tape hell. To be clear, this isn't just about rare earths. This is about how India repeatedly fails to execute when it matters most. Whether it's semiconductors, defense technology, or now rare earths, India's talk is big but its follow-through is broken. We've known that for decades now, India loves talking. Modi may love photo ops at tech summits and ribbon-cutting ceremonies, but the hard policy work, building infrastructure, investing in scientific expertise, cutting red tape, that's where the Indian state collapses under its own weight. Meanwhile, China isn't just holding the keys to rare earths. It's innovating. It's developing recycling technologies for rare earths. It's investing in deep-sea mining. It's locking down supply deals across Africa and Latin America. China isn't thinking about the next election cycle. It's thinking 30 years ahead. India, on the other hand, can't even ensure domestic supply for the next five. Heck, they're struggling with basic things like public toilets and sewage. But here's the truly embarrassing part. India's public sector companies like India Rare Earths Limited do exist. But they are hopelessly underfunded, outdated, and mismanaged. They produce barely a sliver of what's needed. Private companies are almost completely locked out due to overregulation. So even if someone wanted to invest in the rare earth sector in India, they'd probably give up before getting past the paperwork. The whole system fails even before it begins. Oh my God. This isn't just a policy failure. It's a national level industrial catastrophe in slow motion. Every year India waits, it falls further behind. Every ton of rare earth it fails to process domestically is another opportunity lost to China, Australia, or even smaller nations with more strategic thinking. And guess what? This shortage isn't just affecting the defense and electronic sectors. It's now hitting renewable energy too. India's wind turbine manufacturers are facing serious bottlenecks. The solar sector is already dependent on Chinese imports. Now, with rare earths in short supply, India's clean energy transition is at risk too. Modi can shout at Manirbar Bharat all he wants, but there's no self-reliance when your factories run on Chinese materials, no independence when your technology sector is built on someone else's resources, and certainly no pride in being the world's largest democracy when you can't even manage your own mineral reserves. So the next time you hear about India wanting to rival China in tech, just ask one simple question. Where are your rare earths? If you found this breakdown useful, then leave a like, comment, and subscribe. Thanks for watching.